Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. Today, we're going to talk about five surprising things that I learned after living abroad for eight years. If you don't know me, I'm Tara, and I've moved my family of six from the U.S. to New Zealand, and we are currently back in the U.S. We had lived in New Zealand for eight years and had moved back and forth, and it's been a lot, but I have been back in the States for about six months, and I've learned some things, some things that actually surprised me. So I'm going to count down the top five things that, I, that I've learned from from the least surprising to the most. So you're gonna to wanna to stay to the end. If you don't know this about me, I do help others move to New Zealand. So if you're interested in possibly considering a move to New Zealand, I highly recommend it as I've done it twice. Um, go to the link in my description to my free course that will just kind of overview things you need to know, how to start, um, just kind of insights on New Zealand. And that's a great place to start if you're interested in moving to New Zealand. So here we go. The number five most surprising thing that I've learned so far since I've been back, I'm sure my learning will continue, is the shopping. So the shopping is great. Like I can order Amazon today and get it tomorrow. I can order Instacart and get food delivered for dinner tonight. It's amazing in that sense, but like I haven't lived in a consumer society for, you know, the last six years at least. And it's like... I find shopping hard. I find that there's so much choice here in the U.S. compared to New Zealand. I find that I'm just not used to spending a lot and shopping on consumer goods, which is a very, consumerism is a very prevalent here in the U.S. And so that's a little bit of an adjustment for me, a little bit surprising. I was so looking forward to the shopping and the clothes and I do enjoy it, but I mean, I'm finding it overwhelming being that the food being the most overwhelming because Number one, it's hard to find really good organic healthy food here. <laughs> That's not outrageous. Thank you, Trader Joe's. But also it's it is just it's so different. You know, it's so simplified in New Zealand, which I loved that about New Zealand when I first got there. I'm like, yes, there's only like six cereal choices and there's a lot more now. But when I got there, um, it was great. But now there's like so much choice and that just adds actual stress in your life. It actually is not helpful. In some ways, it's nice when you want to find that one thing that you've been looking for. But as a general rule of thumb, it's not always better to have so much choice. And then just thinking about the fact that I can actually get things quickly. Uh, so for example, like a lot of times I'll be like, oh, I need to go and get this. And then people will say to me, we'll just order it on Amazon or just get it on Instacart. And I was like, oh, like I'm just not used to thinking like that. <laughs> I'm not used to being like instant gratification. And then it, you know, it, it forces you to think about that. You know, like I struggle with I have to order a couple things from Amazon, so I do it. And then I remember a couple hours later that maybe I forgot something, but I can't get myself to order it because I don't know. I don't like that. I, I feel like the consumer is the winner in the Amazon world, but I feel like, you know, having three different delivery people is very, you know, wasteful. I guess would be the word and like you know like i feel like i should at least be able to organize my thoughts organize what i want and then have it all in one shipment and that doesn't always happen and so gosh there's just like a lot of adjustments so you're seeing the struggle that i'm having in my head with like i don't know do i want to have all these different people run around for me and yeah i don't know is am i just being lazy like i don't know there is a lot of laziness i can i mean even instacart can like pick up your takeaway as you come back and i'm just like oh my gosh this is crazy so yeah shopping has been an adjustment because there's so much stuff and people just buy new things all the time and i'm just not used to that and i don't want to go back to that so don't get me wrong like i'm not like i'm turning into a totally crazy consumer i'm definitely enjoying some aspects of it but definitely trying to be very aware like do i really need this it's really helpful that i live in an apartment right now because it's really easy to say like don't have room okay number four number four this is a big one this is a big one not as big as number five but it's pretty big so i guess what was one of the things that I, and i've kind of hinted on this before because i've noticed it but really noticeable when i've moved back and how much of the things that you value are cultural. So many of the things that you think you value are cultural. And it isn't until you come up and butt up against a different culture, a different way of doing things that you then can decide what it is that you value or which kind of way that you like better or, the, or, or not, you know, different ways of doing things. There isn't like, you know, it isn't the, the American way is like the only way, right? And so 
it, it's just amazing at how much of the things that you value are just cultural and American. Seeing all the flags out all the time, that's very different. And I didn't realize that that was cultural. You know, this constant talk about freedom and da, 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 and that's very, that's very cultural. Like all their countries have freedom. <laughs> They don't need to talk about it all the time. They don't need, I don't know. It's a, it's, it's interesting and it's, it's, they have a value a placed on that. And then also living in another culture and seeing different values that they're placing on things like the fact that they really value time off of work that they, that everybody gets four weeks holiday, no matter what their job is. And it's like, but that's a really different value or being back in the U S where you have to work all the time and like, I was just talking with a client about the fact that when you come into the American workforce, say you're hired for 40 hours, you're expected in a lot of situations to work 50 with that extra pay and you're expected to do, go above and beyond generally always. Um, whereas in New Zealand, that would be, no, you wouldn't do that. I remember my first day at work in New Zealand, they were like, there was a, we were in a team meeting and somebody was like, this isn't in my job description. So, and I was like, holy cow, I'm just trying to imagine myself in the US like saying, this isn't in my job description. And I'd be like, not impressed. And yeah, I wasn't gonna probably get much of a raise that year. <laughs> but like, I, that's what I'm saying. It's like so many of the things that you think that you value that you feel is normal is actually like very cultural. And so it's interesting. So it's interesting to take a step back and to think about, you know, what is it that I value? What is it that I really think about this? Like I'm walking back into a consumerism society, I'm a lot more wasteful than the one that I've been in. And it's like, you have to like, you know, what it is that, what is it that you believe? What it is that you think? What is it that you value? Like we came back and was like, we are not going back to only two weeks vacation every year. We are not going back to the, you know, we kind of had this in our mind and we have forced that adjustment, whether we get paid or not in that situation. So so many different things. And so, yeah, it was really kind of eye-opening to me that, yeah, so many things are cultural and not necessarily like, you know, something that, you know, you have, I guess, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is value seems so uh, integral into your life and like very important, but maybe it's just because of the environment that you grew up in, that you feel that way or that you value that thing and that, that it's actually changeable. I wasn't, I guess, thinking about my values as something that's changeable. Um, of course, I haven't obviously changed all of my values, but there's just so many things that you just don't realize. So anyway, my I highly recommend at any point in your life, if you can live abroad, even for a year, two years plus, at least two years, do that because it really gives you a perspective that I don't think that you can have reading a book, watching a show, traveling. I really think that you should. Okay, number three. Number three is, I guess, surprising for me because I guess I have come back every year as much as I can and I have maintained good relationships with friends and different family members. But I guess I'm surprised at how easy it has been to walk back into friendship, to walk back into friends that I was really close to when I left as if nothing as if time hasn't passed. Obviously, I'm a different person. They're a different person. A lot of things have happened, but how little that actually matters. <laughs> it's like amazing because like I am hanging out with friends that like, you know, we had babies together. We had a different stage of life together and we're reconnecting and it's a fine and it's the same. And it's just really nice. I guess I'm really surprised at how easy that was. I was like, oh my God. I have to go through and make friends again and like I need to make new friends you know like it's been so nice to be able to walk back into community and um, I have been making an effort to make new friends you know when I can but like yeah I just I was so surprised at how easy it was to just walk back into friendships and not a lot had changed okay number two the second thing that surprised me so far about moving back is the language. Now I know that New Zealand and the U.S. both speak English. I mean, New Zealand has Te Rio. There's uh, plenty of languages spoken in the U.S. and New Zealand, but those are the main ones used. And it's not that. It's not that I've moved to a different country with a different language. It's just the words that they use. That it's just like this must be what it's like for people that know multiple languages, where you just have like the different languages in your brain, and you're just kind of pulling out what applies. But like, I can't can't believe how many times I am getting, I'm saying, you know, like the New Zealand version of it. People look at me, which is fine. 
I mean, they're not that different, you know, like rubbish and trash, not that different. People know what you're talking about, but they're looking at you like, what, you don't have a British accent, but why are you talking like that? I do work with, you know, New Zealand a lot because I help people move there. And so I'm constantly adjusting like the words that I'm using, the spelling of things. <laughs> it's so interesting to me. I just was surprised by that. I was surprised by how much I have to switch my words. And I grew up in the U.S. and so it's very natural for me to go back and to know it. But it's funny watching my younger two kids where they didn't really grow up here. And just having to constantly explain to them what things mean. <laughs> that I, it's even hard for me to, to anticipate what it is that they're not going to understand. Because I understand it. And to me it's normal. Um, but to them it's like, what are you talking about? Like even, what was it last night? My daughter was like, we're going to have a banquet for her volleyball team. And she's like don't know what that is what do you say and I was like okay, okay prize giving <laughs> like a prize you know and so like this constant translating and we I do it all the time especially with you know just even like basic school stuff like the words that they use in New Zealand for like education you know because I worked in higher education and just you know paper and um you know, periods and, you know, where they have periods and recess and everything is so different here. And they're just, and they're trying to like, you know, what does that word mean? What does that mean? Where do I go? It, every, I mean, even cafeteria is a little bit different. And I don't know, there's so many things where it was like, oh, you don't know what that means. But also like when we go places, they're like, I've never had this before. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> or I've never been here before. And so that's an adjustment. So that's kind of fun, kind of rediscovering, but also like, yeah, like I can't just believe how much I have to switch the language. And number one, the number one thing that has surprised me since I moved back to the U.S. from New Zealand has been the fact that I appreciate where I live, where I grew up, everything so much more than I ever anticipated. <laughs> I, you know, like when you grow up and you're like, I'm dying to get out of here. I'm so sick of this cold weather. You know, like all of these things that I have always said. And then to come back and have a whole renewed appreciation for things, for the the animals that we have here, for the vegetation that we have here, for the just how different hikes look in the forest here compared to the bush in New Zealand. Um, a new appreciation for, like I've really enjoyed how much people decorate, like all the decorations for Halloween coming up has been amazing. I'm very excited about Christmas. I'm not excited about the cold, but my kids are. My kids are excited about a white Christmas. Um, you know, and then just like, I've always like, oh, I don't really like Wisconsin. And, blah, blah, blah. and now like I can really see the beauty in it. I can really see why people like it. Um, I could really appreciate it for what it is. And there's no chance, zero chance. Even after being in New Zealand for two years, we had moved back to the US. I was not getting that perspective at that point. It was, I had to be gone a long time, 10, this is eight years total, eight years total. And my perspective has changed. My appreciation probably, you know, has to do with age as well. Um, and it's just so nice. It's like, I'm like, oh, like some parts, you know, you like and you don't like, but I like so much more than I thought I would and so much more um, than I used to. And so that has been a huge benefit of um, moving abroad. So again, another reason why you should move abroad in your lifetime, because it just, it gives you a whole renewed appreciation, a new appreciation for uh, relationships, like being away from family for a, for a long time has a whole nother appreciation that I just never would have got there. And it would have just been like, you know, um, you kind of have, and the, and the relationships grow, you know, they improve, everybody appreciates everything a lot more, everybody puts up with a lot more probably. And, and, you know, granted, I've been here for six months, so we'll see. <laughs> but so far, that is my top five surprising things that I have learned from moving back from New Zealand to the US in 2024. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope that you can comment below and tell me your stories and your experiences um, from living abroad or questions that you have about living abroad. I am here to help you. And I would love to hear stories about other people that have moved and come back to their hometown and like what they've learned and what they've experienced and, and share it there. I would love to hear it. I'll see you guys next week.